part of uh, the business item 6A. And uh, we have the uh, 6B, which is the strategic planning and visioning exercise. And, um, uh, if you want to kind of start this and just explain the, the components of this exercise and what you're hoping to, to get from it. Sure, you bet. Uh, so I know that there are a number of commissioners that are on new to business business commissions. I want to acknowledge that and hopefully this exercise will help you kind of give an idea of where the commission has been in the past. Um, and help provide a little bit of direction moving into the future for this group and then also for future groups as well. So if you had a chance to do that strategic plan, you notice it's pretty thorough as far as like identifying what the commission is interested in and uh, in, in supporting the city as a recommending body. Uh, and uh, there is a little bit of notes in there about how the commission plans to accomplish the strategic plan goal. And in those notes, it, it states that they will review the strategic plan, ensure the goals, the strategies, action aid, and priorities are relevant for the commission. The update, the list are located in the strategic plan, including the group's mission and goals uh, as they feel is needed. Choose appropriate tasks to incorporate into the strategic plan's action items. Decide what action items should be chosen as a fiscal year priority for the commission to focus on. And then, uh, select or, or have volunteers for some of these fiscal priorities to take on some of the action items for moving them forward. And then at the end of the year, try to assess how the, the commission has progressed on their achievements over the, over the course of the year. And so that is kind of what this activity is, is for, to kind of work on them. So we set up uh, two different types of activities. Uh, one asking commissioners why you're here. This is just an opportunity for you to provide two or three uh, minutes each about why you know, the business commission, what your hopes and dreams are for the commission. Uh, and if you could identify you know, one or two goals for that, that would be great. And how they hope to achieve uh, those goals uh, and identify you know, a couple of action items around that. And then we we were going to open up our opportunity to ask questions of other commissioners or staff to help provide any clarifications that you might have the need for uh, from the strategic plan. And then we were hoping to move into a, a second activity called Start, Stop, Continue, where each commissioner will be asked to contribute um, you know, so, some idea of, of what they think is working in the strategic plan, so what things you might want to continue doing, uh, what maybe not working, uh, what, what should we start doing, and uh, what should we stop doing. And so that would be another opportunity to each way in. And that might take the majority of our meeting, and if we need additional time, we can always tell this on a future agenda as well. And then the fourth step of our activity this afternoon would be to review the, uh, the action items of the strategic plan and, and identify what your private actions could be for this meeting. Um, hopefully anybody have questions for Robert at this point? Andy, is your hand up for this or was this left over from the previous? No, sorry, it's uh, it's still up. I'll lower it. Sorry. Okay. No problem. I just didn't want to ignore you. <laughs> um, I guess I, I'll I'll start with the first item. Um, why I volunteered to, you know, to be on the commission. Um, I've been on the commission, you know, since April 2018. And I originally came to Flagstaff as a forestry major uh, at NAU in the mid 1970s, and immediately fell in love with the uh, Flagstaff city and people, and especially you know the the environment, you know the open space uh, and every the opportunities that are provided here. Um, 
I believe that the, there's been good progress made, you know, in the last few years um, in preserving and managing open space. Um, but, you know, I want to be part of the future as well and to make sure that the, the elements and, and the things that drew me here and actually to stay permanently um, becomes sustainable, you know, and, and, and an asset to the city. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, those elements uh, are preserved and enhanced for the you know, future generations of uh, people who come to Flagstaff and learn and experience um, the, the natural environment. So I just want to be part of that. Um, if I was to state two goals, I guess one would be to see the, the, the integrated vision for the integrated open space become a reality. Where we have an interconnected um, system of open space um, that um, will serve the entire city so that you know, uh, you know right now there are parts of uh, Blackstaff, especially south of 40 that, that don't have um, the, the open space that, that they, you know they deserve and that is evident you know in the rest of the city and the second one is to um, see that the program becomes sustainable um, and somehow realize a sustainable um, funding mechanism. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure how that could happen. I know, you know there's always options like bonding and all the other stuff, but something I, think, I feel needs to happen to make sure that um, the program continues, um, like I said, sustainably and not have to go year to year and not and wondering where all of your funds might come. You know, it, it's nice to get grants and, and all of those types of things. And, and we've been, you know, pretty good at getting those, but it would be nice, also nice to just have something, you know, for the program that is funding um, what we like. That's about, that's about it. <laughs> I'm just kind of rambling at this point. So. Um, we want to take it next. Sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, I, I first of all want to commend uh, Robert uh, and Sylvia and, and the rest of the parks crew there in Flagstaff uh, for really uh, maintaining Flagstaff's open space on a daily basis. Uh, I know it's an important part of the city and uh, just to talk about Prop 413 really shows that city residents value their open space and I think it's important for city council members to remember that uh, in their deliberations about all the, the city uh, aspects of the city. Um, I know it's tough to set aside money for open space purchasing, but I think uh, I would like to see the Open Space Commission, you know, talking about purchasing open space land, uh, expanding the program, uh, finding ways to work with uh, federal, state, and uh, local landowners to uh, have easements and trail connectors and all that. That's that's what I've learned is it's a really tricky process. I know within the city they have their real estate department and multimodal people and you know it's it's a big lift to try to get some of these things done uh so i i just want to see more work done on that front um but i also think uh you know there was a there was a recent uh executive order signed by president biden last week related to uh, a tribal gathering that they had uh or a tribal summit 
President Biden signed an executive order basically uh, directing all federal land managers to work with tribes uh, on co-management strategies. And I think, uh, honestly, I would like to see the city uh, take that same approach. Uh, the land acknowledgement, uh, I think, is valid in that uh, these are lands that many tribes have known for many generations. Uh, there may be stories about places like McMillan Mesa that we don't even know about. Uh, things may have happened there that we don't even know about. Um, but I think co-managing these lands with tribes would be a, a really good step towards restoring environmental justice in our community. Um, I'm not too sure what that would look like. Uh, I know that there is some precedent for it. Uh, the city of Flagstaff worked well with tribes on Picture Canyon and making sure that uh, the interpretation of uh, the petroglyphs at Picture Canyon was done in a way that uh, worked with the tribes. So I'd like to see that thing move forward as well, that uh, the city of Flagstaff learns to work with tribes uh, on land management. And, uh, you know, that's that would be really cool. I'd like to see that. Thanks. Andy, can we ask you why do you volunteer to be part of the Open Space Commission? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, that actually relates to something else I wanted to point out. Um, so I uh, actually had to move to Oakland, California, and I'm, I'm living there now. And unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, enjoy the benefits of Flagstaff's open spaces, uh, besides this meeting, of course, which is great. Uh, so I, I probably am going to have to resign from the commission uh, since I'm not living in Flagstaff anymore. I know that's a requirement for commission members to live within city limits. Uh, I was thinking that I'd be heading back there, uh, but it's not looking like I will. So uh, that being said, I joined uh, basically because one of the outgoing commissioners bullied me into uh, getting on the commission. Uh, just kidding. It wasn't it wasn't bullying. It was a very strongly uh, persuasive persuasive argument, but uh, I had one of the outgoing commissioners uh, ask me to join, which I did. Thank you. All right, I guess I will go next. Why I volunteer for to be here. I like open space and one of the attraction for us to move here to Flagstaff is open space. But during how many years we live here, open space is really just dwindling down. That's the thing worried me. And I really want to have it really just the, the city more active in terms of disturbing open space and if possible really expanding it. Now I understand that we need housing, we need people in here, but we really have to manage it in some ways that open space still available so the citizens still could enjoy it without driving so far to go to enjoy that. So my goal and um, my dreams actually, the city will be a little more active and I can agree more with Commission Wilson in terms of hopefully the city would put aside the money, put in the budget, not just um, scrambling every year where we could get the money just to, to clean up, how to take out the um, impassive weed, for example, that's really just the reality of it. But uh, with putting aside the money and recognizing that open space is valuable to the community, um, not only for the health, physical health, that in terms of exercise, but also for the mental issues. So that's my main spot. I'm next in line. Uh, first, introduce myself and also apologize. Sure. I ran from my house down to City Hall. I ran from City Hall up to the Sandable Building, ran back to my house, <laughs> and then I drove here. <laughs> so I got my work out here. Uh, my name's Nat White. Um, uh, 
And as part of my introduction, I've been in Flagstaff since 69, and I've been involved in various things, but open space has been uh, a very important part of my involvement. Uh, as one of the ringleaders of State Buffalo Park in 86, 85, 86, and been involved in all along. So uh, why did I jump in now? Well, uh, there was an opening, and I thought I could help by bringing some of that background uh, based on the fact that we we're all here for that I really think there are all kinds of reasons to support open space in a, in a well-managed way, um, in, a, in a strategic way. And incidentally, the strategic plan looks great. Wow. Uh, so anyway, I'm glad I wasn't involved with it because it must have taken a lot of work. Uh, so uh, that's why um, at least two goals, um, outside funding, and that, that's an umbrella which includes collaboration outside, but collaboration within the city on a whole bunch of things. So uh, there's, there's the direct funding, but then there's the extra funding, the outside funding. So I'd be interested in learning about that and helping wherever I can. And then, uh, I hope I can, another goal is I hope I can help in some small way, just from the 50 years I've been here, where I think there may have been an opportunity we missed and now's the time to take it, or where there was an opportunity we took where we shouldn't have, you know, that kind of uh, background. Uh, I don't have a particular agenda other than supporting open space and the momentum that the commission has developed over the years, as Andy pointed out, it's, really come a long ways. Um, so uh, so those are the two two ty types of goals I have and my action item will be just to be here and participate. I hope we didn't go over three minutes. No. <laughs> um, so uh, Mary Morton um, and uh, yeah, I'm the Kinsey liaison, and I had just been appointed to planning and zoning in February, and there was a need for a representative to be a liaison here on open spaces. And um, so I'm still learning about the commission and how this commission and Robert interfaces within the city and all of that. And then for this exercise and reading the strategic plan can be really helpful, as have been the site visits that we've done so far in the last six months. Um, and the educational hikes that I was able to attend, which I intend to do more of this year. Um, so, you know, serving on open spaces interested me because as a user, I enjoy open spaces. And, you know, like all of you, um, it's one of the attractions to Flagstaff. Um, and so, you know, as a user, um, as I kind of touched on when we were talking about signage, um, that's important to me, the, the amenities and the interpretive signs and the wayfinding. Um, trail signage at our open space locations is important to me because that always makes an impression on me where I visit other places. Um, so one of my goals would be to continue to foster that. If I can contribute in any way from you know my marketing background to to do that, and also to contribute to any content on um, that was in the strategic plan as far as you know Facebook and newsletters and you know signage and things like that. I, I'd like to be able to help in that facet. Um, as a liaison from P and Z, I'd, I'd like to have a, a you know, um, dig deeper into that role and understand that role a little bit more on, you know, why there is a liaison from planning zone here and back to that commission. Um, from what I've seen on planning zone so far, because by the time cases come to us, the negotiations, negotiations for open space are a done deal already. They've been done in community development, and there's really not a a place to ask about open spaces or common spaces in a development. And uh, I do ask a lot of questions on, on that commission about those sorts of things. So it, it would also be helpful to know if some of these landowners and developers have already been approached about an open space contribution um, and their foots trail planning and things like that, and, and whether they've been a receptive partner um, and are in tune to the needs that the city wants, you know, are they, do they want to work with us or are they open to those kinds of things? Um, and, and the reason that I was compelled to 
beyond planning and zoning is I just feel that the city's at such a critical point with the remaining developable land uh, within the city limits and it just could really make or break us with regard to housing and infrastructure and open space and open space is what we all enjoy and what people always say is why we live here you know our natural surroundings so it's important but as we touched on you know the housing shortage um there's just a battle for those limited resources and it's going to take some delicate balancing um you know when the city's asking for affordable housing or higher levels of energy efficiency you know the main bargaining chip that we use is increasing density at a cost of giving that natural resources and and sacrificing open space so you know i'd like to see you know i just see open space slipping in priority and because of the housing shortage and the climate emergency and yes those are important things but so is open space um and i live south of the 40 so i i see you know what's, what's going on i follow the development um, who owns the land, who's bought the land, um, I'm concerned. So I'm really encouraged to see that that area is a high priority on the strategic plan. Um, you know, one of the largest landowners of uh, that large state land piece that got purchased, you know, their business models, luxury resort communities and golf courses and custom homes and it's concerning to me that, you know, another golf course might be considered open space. Um, I, I hope that there's more that can be done in negotiations um, as things get developed along along that, you know, that area and that corridor. Um, what happens, I come from, like I said, I come from a marketing background specifically for new home builders. So I've only worked in Flagstaff with that regard for the last two years of my career I'm retired now. Um, but what I see is that, you know, and what I know of their processes is that it starts so early and I feel sometimes maybe we're too late in asking for things in their process. And I hope that maybe we can, and then maybe that's something that I can foster is that you know, can we collaborate more with community development and landowners, uh, you know, to express our desires and our, and our needs and that open spaces um, continues to have a, a voice in that. Um, for example, you know, when the developers met about the alternatives for 4th Street realignment connecting to JW Powell, um, they came up with an alternative, which was ultimately adopted by city council, but it went right past Hoffman Tank, which is one of the highest priority areas identified by open space. And in our discussion, I don't think open space has had a voice at that point um, to say, hey, you know, you're gonna put a road right next to Hoffman Tank when we really would like to preserve that. How can that, you know, how can those discussions be changed and opened? Um, so that would be one of my hopes and dreams and, and goals to assist in, in any way um, with those collaborations. So. Thank you. Um, Mr. Orchin, did you have anything you wanted to say? Oh, why, yes, there is. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, well, first I want to say hi, Danette. Uh, I walk by yours and Andy's house every day, and so it's nice to see you on here. Very nice. Um, so we have why, hopes, goals. Um, I joined this commission because I want to be proactive in protecting and enhancing Flagstaff open spaces um, because I use them every single day, and I'm concerned that the slogan, Don't Phoenix Flag, is a bygone error. I think it's too late. Um, I have hopes to enhance Flagstaff's open spaces um, presence in conjunction with Flagstaff's climate action plan. There's a lot of push recently with the city of Flagstaff and building this climate action plan. And I think that that could be a way for us to get, excuse me, excuse me. 
I think that that could be a way for us to get more involved um, with maintaining and enhancing and possibly adding more open spaces to what we already have. Um, my goals for participation on this commission is I want to be a part of a team that enhances community knowledge of how to use and preserve open spaces. Uh, I would like to understand how to use funding as a tool to secure more open spaces and not to lose any more of the open spaces that we have. So to reiterate what the person said before me, and I apologize, I don't remember that we lost that chunk of open space because of the flooding from the fires up in the peaks and to try and be more proactive in mitigation strategies and working in partnerships with the city so that those types of situations don't happen again. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone's had a chance to jump in. So you have, you can, looks like you've been capturing everything that we've been. And to just point out that most of what everybody is saying is in the strategic <laughs> All right, so I guess then we could go on to the yeah. second part of that. Um, questions of and for the strategic plan. Anybody want to jump in with any questions? Oh, a couple questions. Um, okay. <laughs> um, are there newer updates to some of those status charts that were in this one that will come later or do we have them now? You know, like as far as like when work was done at each of the sites, you know, um, how does how does that get updated? I guess is my first question. The status charts, I should be updating those for you guys. I have not updated those for this meeting, but I certainly can update those. And then the other charts as far as like Priorities and ideas, that's the commission. That's from today. Yeah, I was more, uh, you know, when was the last time things were worked on? Yes, yeah, so I think it was about a year ago the commission visited the strategic plan and made a few minor adjustments, but not anything. Okay. And then um, when I first joined the commission, there was a discussion about all those e easements and the condition and maintenance of easements. Was that not part of the commission's work? Was that a staff project? Where, whatever happened with that? That topic came up when we were discussing, discussing some easements on Nick Mill and Lisa. Um, and uh, the commission requested that topic come back to them to inform them about other easements that are on open space that could ultimately influence the preservation or conservation of those properties. And so our real estate manager came and did a, a talk about other existing easements. And then I believe the next step was for us to identify which of those easements we thought was the most impactful and then reach out to those easement holders to see about what type of conservation values they have for maintaining their easement, such as like invasive weeds. Okay, so that's an ongoing thing, but not necessarily listed in our strategic. I don't, yeah, I don't recall it being listed in our strategic plan. I think that that is something that could be added. Uh, we can certainly revise the plan today. Um, and I think that that's a great suggestion. Maybe just as a, a follow up point so it doesn't get lost along the way. Um, and is there, maybe this will be a discussion later on, but is there any chance or maybe the process for sort of uh, Julian mentioned replacing the loss of the open space at Schultz Creek. Um, you know, is that what uh, happens with that? <laughs> or, or is there anything that needs to be done at that location to still make it somewhat usable for open spaces? Was there a trail realignment that needed to happen or something to that effect? 
there has been no discussion on replacing those 20 acres of open space with other city property. Um, not sure who we bring that idea up to, but I think it's a great idea. From, from a program standpoint, because we, we definitely don't want to lose open space. We did advocate, advocate quite heavily for a trail connection there. Um, there's a foots connection that comes up from 180 in the neighborhoods that eventually, that is part of the foots master plan that would eventually connect through this parcel. And that was part of the foots master plan before this occurrence happened. Uh, and so we did, we have, we did have a recent meeting with Stormwater and the project manager out on site looking at potential trail alignments. And uh, the site does have a, a fairly large staging area. It's on the west side of the property that could act as parking. In fact, the, the public is already using it as a parking area. Um, so the plan is to continue to work with our city colleagues for establishing that connection and putting up some signage. Although um, that, that 20 acres will no longer be managed by our own business program. Um, and so the timeline for that would be to come up with some signs uh, over the course of the winter and install those hopefully for, before the spring when things start to get busy up there. Um, and then the trail connection would take place when the weather is conducive for that and someone's in the spring or early summer. So we've been working talking also with the forces about how best to make that connection. Good. Thank you. Uh, and then I know Lars Vince is on the call as well. He's the Fritz Finder. And he has been working on coming up with an idea of, of making the connection from the Elks Lodge up to the up to the Schultz Creek also as a formal connection. That is still something that's in the works, but, but he's, he's thinking about it. So, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, just um, to cut all of our notes, if we've had a request for those of you speaking in the room to please identify yourself for those online okay. so they know who is speaking and also remember to speak up. Thank you. This is Nat White. Um, I just read the strategic plan. So these are just little notes that I, I took. On page four, um, when you talk about trails, I think there ought to be something to qualify trails like planned pathways rather than these trails because there's so many social trails. And so when it talks about trails. What page is that? Page? At page four. Page five. Just add another uh, animal into the list on Nicola Mesa, and that's the meadowlark, which is prominent up there in Buffalo Park. Uh, along with what you were saying, um, I did say my name, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Short term memory. Long term memory is good. Uh, Shoals Creek, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, I've used the parking lot. So that's a great benefit right there, whether it was planned or not. Um, but it seems to me there's opportunities that we really need to work on. And as you know, I was real concerned about the rapid planning of that whole thing and the takeover of it. Um, but now that it's done, maybe this, I really hope there can be a lot of collaboration there. The parking lot is the first step. Um, then, that, 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 that was in page page five when you had uh, Schultz Creek pending. And I would think in the strategic plan, you'd update that now to include what's happened and, and, and moving ahead. Uh, page 11, uh, I think it would be wise politically when we're talking about open space in, in that area of page 11 uh, to use at least uh, the term affordable housing. To acknowledge, you know, that there's need for that, and, and it's not just open space. Um, I think it's just politically wise to acknowledge that. Page seven, sixteen. Um, that talks about various um, features that should be protected, and natural features and things like that. But I think ledges and rock 
it talks about view sheds too, but ledges and, and rock features ought to be included in that. And it was a great deal of effort uh, by another group to get that into codes, those rock outcroppings and things like that. Um, so those are those are my comments. So is that under ecological value? Is that where you're going yes, to page, that? Page 16. Yeah. Yes, page page Yes. If I can tag on to his comment, I was wondering if wildlife could be added into that. Uh, at least in the area south of the forty, you know, there's there's a large a couple large herds of, of elk and I think there's a, you know, we talked about, you know, wetlands, waterways, grasslands, um, but I'd like to see, you know, concerns for wildlife put in there, wildlife corridors. Um, Mary Norton making the statement, please. I'm done. Anybody else have any comments on the strategic plan? This is my chair. Um, I don't see any hands up. I had a couple of things and, and kind of some of the points that I have uh, come up with within reading through this kind of dovetails with what a couple other people have said. But, uh, you know, on page five, the Schultz Creek, you know, I think full description of that area needs to be updated, you know, based on what's happening with the retention basin. Um, again, the pages that Norton mentioned about updating management and maintenance on pages seven and eight, you know, get those up concurrent. And also on page 10, it talks about um, in a goal of one strategy 1.1. Do we need to update, do any updating based on the organizational changes? You know, you know, it's not really parks and rec, you know, only anymore. You know, just to clarify that. Okay, uh, page 10. And then also on page 19, there's a spot as well. Um, and then there was discussion about you know working with community development, and that's on page 15, and that was blank. Which actually surprised me there was no dates on. Um, so I mean that is to me that is also as Commissioner Martin was saying that it's very very important uh, to, to work with community development. And also the last. The point I have was on the map on page 22. It's McMillan Mesa is shown just as a priority, but not as a as part of the open space. I think that needs to be updated to, to show that it's more than just a priority. So that's kind of the things that I had. Um, the questions on the Plan. I see that uh, Commissioner Worsham has her hand up. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, related to the comment on page 10, strategy 1.1, actively uh, collaborate with key partners on a regular basis. Would it be advantageous to try and cultivate new partners that are possibly developers in the community? I noticed that our key partners are are, are, are already exist like the forest, are, you know, Picture Canyon, those working groups, but like Miramonte is a huge key player in the city of Flagstaff and developments. And it would be interesting to see if they're planning some more big developments and if they could be a partner possibly with trails. I, I, I don't know, but more partnerships possibly looking at other areas, non-traditional areas. Thank you. you know that. Are there any other comments on, or questions on uh, item number two? For the strategic plan. I just have an additional comment. Okay. Um, here, I'm kind of tagging on the, um, Jillian was saying about the developers is, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis on listening tours for the developers, you know, the Chamber of Commerce did one and then 
the state legislature was up here listening to one, and it was, of course, with regard to housing. But, you know, I don't see the city or the de development department or, you know, us as open spaces or, you know, being able to have those connections and have our needs and requests heard. And maybe that is part of collaborating with some of the landowners and and the, the larger developers and, um, you know, besides you know, Miramonte, it's Symmetry and Capstone, and then there's a few other smaller ones, but those are those are the people that, that own the large swaths of developable land right now. And I don't know, my second comment is, and I don't know where this fits, if it fits, um, you know, but when state land is purchased, because there are other big parcels that could come along in the future to be released, you know, is there any way that there could be some provision that open spaces has a, a voice early on. You know, we, you know, the zoning comes in, I, I think it comes in as rural residential right off the bat, which allows for just about anything, you know, for the city be able to have a request to work with that new purchaser of the land and say, could you help us, you know, look at open spaces? Um, for instance, that big swath of state land that got purchased, you know, had the Arizona Trail going through it. Um, and I don't know, I, you know, maybe Robert can shed light on this. I don't know if open spaces had any, you know, say in, you know, what happened to that realignment of the Arizona Trail. You know, that got moved too right away. Um, but anyway, I just wish we had more of a voice there. Yeah, thanks for those comments. Um, Mark Mintz, the uh, transportation effort and global planner, was informed about the sale of that property where the Arizona State trip runs through. But I think he has been part of the discussions about the fishery yeah, I'm, I'm I know Martin's on it. Mark is more welcome to comment. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Chair, members of the commission, um, I'm Martin Ince. I'm the multimodal transportation planner for the city. Um, so we were we were in, a, in an advantageous position when that parcel, when the state land department sold that parcel. We have a permanent easement for the Arizona Trail um, across it in, in its its present location. Um, I think we've indicated that that we're willing to entertain um, realignment of it because we know that that it could be. Uh, Realign someplace that would be, you know, a little bit less disruptive to future development. But I, I think our position ought to be: if we can get a better alignment, then we're happy to realign it. But we always we have a permanent right for it, so we're not. There's nothing that compels us to realign it for the developer. We can always keep our permanent right, uh, which was purchased probably in the, well, I want to say the, the late 1990s or early 2000s. So. Um, the, the trail, Arizona Trail will continue, uh, whether it's in that alignment or not is another question, but we've been working with the planners and uh, the developer to try to find a, a, a better alignment for it, basically that, that gives us an, a nicer Arizona Trail um, if we're gonna give up the permanent property, right? So hope that helps. Happy to Thank answer you. any questions. Thanks, Mark. Um, that's complete number two. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I, you know, I thought that those are some great ideas. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge that I appreciate all of you guys doing the hero that and, and, and so I can say what's important and all that. And I, you know, I think that we, I can see a real trend of what's important to all of the commissioners mm -hmm. as far as you know, managing our, our space and making sure that's properly done, but also really trying to move forward our open space uh, system plan um, by looking at acquisitions and coming up with some kind of funding. So I think that's something good to kind of keep in mind as we move to the next uh, step of our, our discussion today. Thanks, Robert. And that next slide, please. Yeah, part is the start, stop, and continue activity. What's working, what's not. Um, when we start, when we stop, Anybody have any comments to start this one off? Um, 
I guess I, I could, you know, as I went through and ended up, you know, printing it up because it was easy for me to work through and highlight and, you know, things that were important to me that struck a chord with me. And then when I got to the, the action items, I saw that pretty much everything that I was looking for was there. And I, that was that was really exciting to see. Um, but one of the things that I, I wondered about um, as far as the, and it ended up, you know, being um, a priority, one of the priority ones on the action items about making things accessible. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Is that, you know, ADA accessible? Is it parking lots, you know, that make things, you know, accessible where people can actually get onto our open spaces? Um, you know, if there's funding for that, you know, I wanted to ask some questions about that. Yeah, I guess thanks for the question. I think it is multifold, uh, like, you, like you alluded to. I think accessibility partially is uh, built around our goal. We want to try to provide a 10 minute walking access time to all residents in the city of Flagstaff. Um, so that includes, you know, making sure there's open space within a quarter mile of where people live. So part of it is uh, through acquisitions or preservation. And then part of it is accessibility for uh, all community members. So uh, thinking about multi-use, uh, pedestrian, multi-use, I should say, uh, like, you know, hiking, biking, horseback riding in some cases. And then uh, we do not have any ADA accessible trails uh, in space at this time. I don't, I don't think actually, is Buffalo Park considered ADA accessible? That's the project that we're working on right now. So, it's currently a, a grant project where we're working on providing some ADA accessible trails. Before this project that is currently ongoing, uh, the trails were usable by folks uh, of different levels. Um, but the, maybe the aggregate type did not meet the, the true requirements for ADA accessibility. Uh, and so, you know. As we move forward, I think uh, we're, we are thinking about this for Observatory Mesa in the trail plan, providing some, some true ADA accessibility trails uh, in partnership with Lowell, on some possibly a new Lowell property. And then also we're thinking about adapting the mountain bike, uh, which requires a provider rip uh, and other trail techniques. Um, and so I think it is something that we are thinking about. Uh, and if we can provide some of those accessible parts of providing better accessibility for trails, I think that we definitely have to move in that direction as a program. Thank you, Robert. Um, is anyone else uh, part of the activity? Um, Online or in the room. This is Matt White. Um, I, I need, need to read it over more carefully, uh, and I probably have some comments on it. Um, what I don't remember reading, though, in, in the strategic plan, is something that uh, uh, Mary has been bringing up, and you brought up a number of times, and that is. Uh, participate in the development process early on so that we can and and that I'm not sure if that's specifically mentioned in the strategic plan uh, and if we did mention it there then there may be some clarifying action items because that's what you are asking how can we do it and that may take talking to the development section a little bit to develop that little part of it. Um, if I may, could I digress for just a little bit because it's directly relative to this? Okay. Um, there's a bunch of us that just realized that um, a variance is being asked for development along Mesa Drive. And Mesa Drive is that drive that goes along the escarpment behind the new apartment buildings and the old apartment buildings on 180. Uh, 
It's about five acres, and I think there are going to be nine homes. The variance that are asking for is rock ledge there to ignore that, and the steep slopes of 35 degrees, ignore that. What isn't mentioned also would be it would change the viewshed there dramatically. Uh, uh, it's a horrible thing. I don't know how it got from Planning and Zoning Commission. And to answer your question, folks in the past that have been on Planning and Zoning Commission say, you brought this to me, I don't like it. Send it back. You can do that. You can vote against it. And you can say open space is important here and it's not even addressed or view sheds or all these other things. And if you don't do it there, yeah, it is an uphill thing because we're now trying to fight this and it comes up 8.30 Wednesday morning. And whether we'll have uh, ability to stop it at that point, I don't know, but it's totally against the um, uh, overlay, protection overlay. It's totally against the rock ordinance. And it is beautiful. And it continues all the way to the museum. And I've, I've mentioned it to Martin and uh, uh, the potential for a connection in the foot trail in an environmentally beautiful way that addresses secret school, the museum, um, and all of all of the area on Fort Valley Road would um, might disappear I, as of this Wednesday. So that's my di yeah. um, digression. I'll stop. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to, to to say that I think we can't really discuss, you know, in any kind of detail here because it's not on the agenda. I'm sorry, but, I was providing but we, I would I would say we could maybe, as an informational item, you know, to the you know, commission and staff, you can consider it as an informational. And I'll add on to that, Mary Mary. As, as the PNC liaison, you know, that would have been, and I don't remember that case, I'm wondering if it was before I was on PNC. Um, you know, that would have been a good thing for, you know, you know the best to have that input where I could say, hey, open spaces is concerned about this, you know, and that's kind of where I'm looking for a little bit of direction is. To what this role as a liaison is for and does. So, and thank you. Yeah, and thank you for putting in my way. I'm, I'm, I'm still anxious about it, and I was waiting for the end, but I couldn't wait. <laughs> so, sorry. So, we'll, we'll stick it in there. Um, uh, anyone uh, see Commissioner uh, Worship? Have your hand up. Yes, thank you. In conjunction with what Nat says, and part of my goals for being a part of this commission, I would like to know how we can become more proactive as a commission prior to our monthly meetings so that I, I don't know if it's through a, uh, an electronic communication how, so that when Nat tells us this now that we, we maybe could have known about it ahead of time or enough ahead of time or be a part of hearing information from other commissions? How do we become more proactive about things? I recognize that the Schultz decision was a fast decision because what was happening at the time, but I think it, it the process of doing some of these changes in town takes longer than what we're involved in. And I, for one, would love to be more proactive in our role as an open space commission and preserver of the lands we have here in Flagstaff. Thank you. Um, anyone, anyone else that like to jump in? Um, I had one thing that I had written down um, for this activity. And that was on page 11, uh, one of the strat strategy 2.1 item number one, where each commissioner makes a presentation on land management practice. Yeah, I think this is a good start or stop. 
know, either we do it or we take it out. Um, I don't think we've actually done this in the past. It's in the strategic plan. Um, if it's important, of course, we leave it in. But I think we just, there's no sense in having it there. That's the one point I have for, for Are currently any of those in strategy 2.1 being um, completed? This is Commissioner Wilson. Um, number two, uh, the volunteers, land stewards, and I mean, is that all in your purview, Sylvia? Yes, and much of that training is online now because of COVID. We made videos, so. <clears throat> there is, I want to say, there is a lot of overlap between what the commission decided for, for uh, action items or, or in their goals and what our program parts on to. So there is a lot of opportunity for us to, to work together. Um, however, I, I do think that uh, when we created this plan, it was, it was very ambitious. It has a lot of, a lot of good, good stuff. And I don't think that certainly in a one year of the commission so I think there is, you know, room to to take some of this out uh, if the commission is interested in, and to kind of reassess it. Like, what are the really big goals for the commission? We really want to be engaged in. Oh, the, the way it is, but um, create the one that's like short term. Goal is this one and point it which one is it. And long term goal, just leave it the way it is because I read it all and I really like it. It's like, wow, it's actually a lot of work and a lot of thought go to it. And I'm thinking, it's like, well, if that's really all reality, that's really just the dream. And I don't want to lose that. So make it really just short term goal of what actually that we could achieve in one year to, to, uh, to three years. And that's what's on page 15. Yeah, so the priorities. Like what, priorities. What are else we going to work on next? And if, you, and if you look at those, I think you'll see that the commission has made some, some progress with their priorities. But we helping to review the, the result of the film, basically, which is complete. You know, working together with our program for the Green Trail Plan. Which is ongoing. And the city code would do be one of the other priorities, uh, which which we also provided and did some review and provided our program is something there. I was wondering, uh, Mary Norton, um, on that strategy 2.1, the question about are any of those three points being done? And I wondered maybe if those came about when there were, you know, commissioners that, you know, had the expertise to give such presentations or had connections to, you know, NAU and, and the university students, if that's maybe why they're there. And, you know, doesn't mean that this commission currently has those capabilities, but maybe then another commission in the future would. Um, also, I noticed uh, on the action items, the very bottom, which was a priority rank number three, participated in one open space volunteer event, um, and it was in support of 2.1 strategy, but it really seemed to fall within strategy 4.3. So, uh, just maybe a correction, or maybe I did was uh, confused about the correlation, but just thought I'd bring that up. I put a question mark about it. Okay. Could you provide a uh, real quick response to the location of that? Yeah, so it's on action items and it's uh, action item priority number three. Right. Should be. 
uh, participate in one open space volunteer event, and that's what's listed under uh, strategy 4.3 instead of strategy 2.1. I don't know really the long history of open space other than the binder that I got inherited. So, um, but I think open space committee is really just made a huge progress compared to just how many years ago. And that's really just, I think that's really just good and keep doing it. It's not really stopping or um, halt or anything and just have to include what actually that the uh, define what the commission is supposed to do and what we have to do and I really want to see in terms of again society Julian I think mentioned it about proactive I really want to see in a lot of ways the um but I say not collaboration actually that interchange of information among the commissions. I was in board of adjustment for how many years and I was mm -hmm. in the diversity commission for how many years. I never heard of others what actually happening and what actually alert that come up with. For example, when I was in board of adjustment, um, I don't know what the progress in PMC until come up to board of adjustment as for variance. So I don't know what the process before and suddenly here, here we come. So if we know it a way ahead, society Julian said proactive and delay to I I know that will be overwhelmed if that's all the commission that's only just information all over the place. But relate to open space. What actually that happening? What happening in PNC? What happening in board of adjustment? What happening in park and rec? What happening in community development? That's the key um, commission and board that really just have kind of influence to open space mission. Does that make sense? Or no, I'm just waiting no, too much. Um, Thank you. Um, see, uh, Commissioner Wilson, have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to, uh, in per, uh, response to strategy 4.3, I would love to be connected with whoever in the city is responsible for the website. And I would like to volunteer my time to update that page. It is grossly out of date and definitely needs some work. I'd love to uh, provide some educational support for that since that is my background so if somebody could at some point make a little note uh and put me in the right direction on who in the city is responsible for that and i would love to volunteer my time to handle some of those six items under strategy 4.3 open space web pages or all of the city's web pages just, just the, <laughs> um, just, I'm, I'm, 
I'm looking at the open space one right now, and it still has stuff from 2021, 20, you know, early October. It doesn't have any. I'd love to. I'm now on the board for Willow Bend. It doesn't have any of the Willow Bend dates when they provide the community hikes. Um, yeah, I would love to volunteer to jump on the open spaces web page the, the, uh, and uh, and help keep that a little bit more live if possible. <laughs> so Jillian, that is me, Sylvia. Truth. So send me an email, Sylvia. I'd love to connect with you and and um and put my mouth where my mouth is and and my time and and I think I met you at the presentation for the Festival of Science. Yes. Excellent. Walk, walk together. Yeah, that's my idea. Go with the range. Yep. Thank you, um, Commissioner. I just wanted to add as far as like what's working um, and what I've seen that's been impressive is the volunteer program and the education program. Um, they seem to be wildly popular. Um, so, good. Work on that. Um, okay, so, how about what's not working? I'll, I'll tag onto that then. Um, I think what we've all kind of talked about, I, I think, you know, just having more involvement in community development and maybe with, you know, real estate and capital projects. So we, you know, have some, uh, some input and a voice into those. Um, I think we could do better there. Let's see, Mr. Worsham, is that your hand from before or is it new? new Sorry, item? forgot to take new it item. down. Sorry. No problem. Just didn't want to ignore you. Uh, anybody else with uh, something that's not working in the strategic plan? And I guess the start and stop, I mean, that was kind of what I was talking about with the commissioner making the presentation on land management practices. You know, we either stop, start it or stop it. Um, to me, like I said before, it doesn't make sense to be there if we're not going to do it. It is a good idea. I, I agree with that. But if we're going to tackle some of these other things like the community development, whatever easements and, and everything else that we have on our plate, we just don't have the, to me, we don't have bandwidth to do everything. So that's my two cents as far as that particular. Anyone else? So this, Seeing any or hearing anything, I will move down to the priority action review and selection. Ideas on what we should put on the list for uh, our priority action. Do you have any comments before on that one? Um, Roger, Roger. Well. I, I guess I can mention that, you know, PROS is working on a master plan. Uh, we're going through the master plan process in, in Parks and Recreation. It's, it's not a you know, master plan already. So uh, we'll be recreating that and open space will be included. We do not currently have um, a, a master plan for open space. So I think that could be a good opportunity where the commission kind of put some thoughts together along the lines of, of what your goals are and to provide us with uh, information for creating the master plan. You know, back to our, our discussion of like being involved in the development process and moving forward the open space system. And, you get, and the commission started this and you will see that in the open space um, map at the bottom of your 
about this particular thing. He went through this process where he could have identified where open space connections were important and where we might want to think about preserving open space. And I really think that it would be to the Commission's benefit to have some type of like uh, update of that map and, and for that you would be considered to be included in our master plan um, to provide us with direction but also to let our other colleagues know that this is the plan for open space and to have something that's, that's concrete that we can provide community development say this is where we're looking at preserving open space in our community so whenever we talk about a development in this area we want to think Conversation. We really need to have like, all of that. And I wouldn't say that we have it in a way that's concrete enough to be able to share that with our, our community involvement partners and developers as well. So you know, that, that's something that I think maybe um, could be, we could collaborate on that as we move forward. Robert, could you refresh our memory? Like when you made that presentation to City Council in October? or so about the lands that have been identified to be preserved where what was the resolution on that i mean is it was it accepted is that now a document that is going to be worked from i think you are referring to when we were talking about the open space remaining bond funds or what uh, i just want to make sure that we were talking about the same thing we're talking about City Council reviewed the remaining 2004 open space bond funds mm -hmm. and how yes. to allocate those. Yes. Yeah, so we went through that process as a commission and identified. But are those the same parcels, regardless of whether they're going to be purchased with bond money or asked, of a, asked for a contribution or a purchase? The parcels are still ranked. They have been identified. In our open door open space matrix, that means that it's important to this space system. Yes. How about I mean, is that what the document that we would use now? No, it's not. It's not like really a guiding document. It's okay. it's more of just a matrix of properties that this commission has reviewed and our program has reviewed to some degree uh, as being important for the open space system. Um, making that into something that is you know, uh, more useful and, and more formal, you know, maybe as a guiding document for a city could help with some of what we're talking about today. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> so when we're talking about creating well, this master plan does not exist today, right? Nope. Okay. We don't have a master so that is something that I'd like to see on the priority action list. Um, I also have a question. So I, I don't know whether it's just, I don't understand how all of this plays together, but I mean, you talk about the master plan, then you have the, the strategic plan, uh, the management plan for legally designated open space properties, and then there's the open space and greenways plan. Can you just just 30,000 foot overview of the differences and what what type of input do you need for the master plan that doesn't exist in those other plans? I, yeah, I can do my best. I can do my best. I know the open space and greenways plan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Martin or Rebecca, please jump in here if you think you have something to add. Uh, but the Open Space is a Greenways plan is a, is a pretty comprehensive plan written, I think, in 1999. It talks about open space in our community. And it is a, um, it provides like an overview of not only the city, but the, the county and other areas as well. Um, and, you know, it has, it, it's very broad strokes. As far as the direction that it takes. Although it has some great information in there, uh, I wouldn't say that it's super specific, besides if you look at the maps. Uh, and then we have a management plan that's the legally designated space management plan, and that essentially lays out guidance for managing our properties. For, so for just moving forward, things like signage, like 
at the Middle East, if you look at our management plan, it talks about the interpretive signs that we hope to install there at some point that we talk about earlier. It also talks about you know, maintaining trails and maintaining cultural and natural resources and all that. How we should go about that to, to become our, our best practices. Uh, the, the difference between a strategic and master plan is something that I've been debating myself. Uh, you know, I, and Rebecca might be able to comment on this too, but you know, I feel like a master plan does paint, is a community plan that paints the direction for our section to move forward. And then the strategic plan maybe is more for uh, our our section to like implement. We need to do this step, 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 these steps in order to get to that view that the community has. Um, yeah, and so our section does have a strategic plan. It is not detailed as much as the strategic plan the commission has. Um, it, it's from a time period where we are part of the sustainability section. And so there's there's really only a couple of pages for what we call our strategic plan uh, for, for, for the whole section. Right, you I can add a little bit, keeping in mind that a strategic plan is intended to be more of a day-to-day, -day, um, you know, it'll set, like, for the section, the open space section or program, it'll have our mission and vision and kind of that standard short, medium, and long term goals for us to, to continue to work on. A master plan, and what, what Robert's referring to, is that we're looking at picking up a, a division wide master plan. So the last Parks and Rec master plan was completed and adopted by council in 2013. So it's out of date now and open space now needs to be integrated and events needs to be integrated as its own piece of the pie, just, just like parks, recreation, open space and events to really pull that together. So that's what we're looking at. We do have funding for that. It's right now a um, a human resource issue because that's going to be a huge project for us to do. So we've started looking at like what are other master plans that we think um, <clears throat> do it well and what elements did they do that, that they did well that we like um, and we'll start putting together a scope of work and, and start looking for a consultant for that. that master plan is going to be, it's my vision, that this will be um, able to be used by our community development partners for reviewing developments when they come in and saying, we need a park here. How do we get that? We need open space here. How do we get that? Or we need these trail connections. These have all been identified and here are other needs in the community, whether it's active recreation or passive recreation or recreation center, um, as the community continues to grow, we don't have, as Robert mentioned, we don't have that good guiding document for our partners that are reviewing developments right now to, to go to and say, well, this plan adopted by council establishes these pros prior priorities and therefore, in development, we need to, to try to make sure that we meet those goals. So I, I guess you could kind of start at ground level with strategic planning. Master plan is like the middle. Um, the carbon neutrality plan would be another good example of a, at that middle level. And then you have the regional plan um, or the, the county's general plan at the top of that chain. And they all kind of feed into each other. No, uh, thanks for that clarification. I, I guess I, I wasn't thinking of the master plan as anything other than open space. So I see where that fits in. You know, it's not just open space, but parks and rec and events. And it's our plan to help us prioritize that too. Um, for both 
open space commission, parks and rec commission, staff, so that we really know where the gaps are and what we need to be working on first. Thank you. It's really encouraging. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's encouraging that we have funding. <laughs> What's the timeline for some? It's still going to be, um, you know, the, the process of a master plan itself is typically a year long because we want lots and lots of community input. This one is a little, it, it's not just a cookie cutter um, parks and rec master plan. We have other elements that we're going to try to tie in. Um, so it's going to take a special consultant <laughs> to be able to help us do that. And um, we're going to have to go find that. I, I would say it's at least two years to adoption at a minimum. So this is Nat. Um, how is that going to fold in with the regional plan development? Great question, Nat. <laughs> <laughs> I just had that conversation with Sarah Dector, who is the city's person that's kind of leading the regional plan effort. We're actually thinking it's going to tie nicely together in terms of timing based on their timing. Good. Um, that she's absolutely aware of what we're trying to do. Good. And we're um, involved with what, where they are in their process as well. That's a good point, you know, because I think, like, you know, the commission has had that update from the search team before the regional plan, and there's opportunity for public input. I think like these, really, these two topics coincide. We have some solid material for our best plan. I think that's really good. We need some solid material for the regional plan that can both help guide our community in the right direction for, for what the community wants. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is Nat. Um, what do you want your priority action to be for this year? Um, I don't know. Any don't know about me, but uh, I really think that we could need to keep working on Observatory Mesa uh, and, and begin to, to make definite progress, definite meaning actually uh, shoveling the ground type progress at some point. And I realize we've made a start and, and unfortunately there's just some hiccups in it, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't just keep working on it one way or another, even if we just keep it in people's minds all the time, this is happening. So I feel that's an important thing. Um, and it shouldn't get left behind as we start looking at regional plans and master plans. I mean, this is this. There's the big vision stuff, and then there's the working stuff. And this forms in the working area. It's the day to day, week to week type of thing. Uh, and I'm really interested in helping in any way I can on that aspect of it. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, just a comment on that. We are, we are continuing that. We will continue that regardless of the other priorities or. And then I just want to point out that Mark has a comment in, in the chat too. He says, we're actually the city council recently adopted an active transportation master plan, which includes a mention of this. So if you guys are interested, you can check that out. Mark, you might be able to send that in the I wonder if, with um, the um, priority action plan that's in here that has no status, the work with community development to clarify when and how the commission should make recommendations on proposed developments. Um, and that's a lot of what's been talked about here. And I wonder if that just needs to be broken down into acts like maybe there's no status because nobody knows how to do it. Because um, I, as a Flagstaff citizen, have no idea what happens if a developer comes in and buys a piece of land from the city or from the state, like, do they have to go to the city to get that sale approved? Do they buy it and then they have to get all the zoning approved? Like, how does that whole process work? And what commissions does it go to? So it might help to have like that 
flow chart of like how does land get developed? What are the different steps that happen as far as the city is concerned? Yeah, future presentation. Yeah. Just wanted to add, this is Mary Jordan. Um, what, as I said, as I went through the strategic plan and highlighted, and then I got to the action plan, uh, you know, chart, um, I don't have any changes to what's listed or the priorities. I, I think they should be continued in all of the hot topics, you know, Derivatory Mesa and community development and, um, you know, that we talked about are here. So, it worked for last year, um, but obviously there's still our main uh, focus. And Commissioner Wilson, I also just mentioned in the city code update as well. That is something that's been kind of out there for a little bit of time. You need to get that stuff restarted. I think it's important that we do. Could, so could somebody expand on that, what that entails? The city code provisions or recommendations to city code for open space? There was very little in the city code that actually protects open space. So it was uh, kind of looking at other communities you know, around the country, you know, Aurora, Boulder, some of the things, what do they do and how are they protecting? Their open space. And so it was kind of come with ideas of what possibly we could do to just uh, codify the, the open space and what can and can't be done, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Thank you. Um, Robert, I need to move on. Um, you need anything else from this one before we uh, continue? It's up, to, it's up to the commission if you'd like to see this on another future agenda. We can continue this discussion. I definitely got lots of great feedback. I think. Um, maybe we could update just kind of based on what we discussed and talk about it in the future. To maybe think about in that chart, the lead entity is like who's going to spearhead that and not do it, but make sure that it happens at commission meetings. So think about which one you might want to talk about. Great. All right. Um, so, of course, we, we started a couple minutes. But uh, moving on to number 7A. Um, the council representative uh, report. Um, thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> uh, council member House, do uh, you have a report? Thanks so much. Um, I don't have a formal report for you guys this week. Um, I did just want to share that with the incoming council, um, I believe we'll be choosing council liaison appointments on the 20th with the um, inauguration or swearing in of, of all the, uh, the incoming council members. Um, so I don't know that I will be with you guys going into 2023. Um, and so just wanted to take a moment in the case that I'm not still your liaison to just share what a, an absolute pleasure it's been um, to meet with you all. Um, I, I honestly, uh, you know, I was assigned this uh, commission in taking on um, former Vice Mayor uh, Becky Daggett's seat, but I have learned so much from you all and I'm so just inspired by your passion for community open spaces. Um, I love the thoughtful conversations that you all have had about um, you know, how open space ties into so much of Flagstaff's culture from development to business to sustainability and, and beyond. Um, and I just want to encourage you all to keep having those conversations going into the future. I think you do have a valuable voice um, in those conversations, even if a, a development plan is not brought directly before this commission, you still have a voice at the table. Um, when you share your your perspectives and your concerns with the um, 
with the thought that's gone into some of those developments. So thank you all for what you do. And I uh, look forward to still tuning into meetings if I'm not your liaison or continuing to partner with you if I am. So thank you. Appreciate those nice words. And uh, hopefully um, you will be uh, continuing with, with us. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see. No. Postpone talking about the management report. We can see that. Let me skip that out. And the informational items to and from the commissioners. We uh, had, had, had one of those already. <laughs> so, um, is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up in that regard? I, I, this is Matt. I would uh, like to bring up the fact that it's so important that Mary Norton is on this commission and what you said. And I would uh, love to talk to you more. I saw the findings that zoning commissions for over 50 years. I, I know the process and I certainly think that you should be able to with your keen eye and your interest in open space, you get that packet. You read that packet and you read, read, see, hey, this is an opportunity or this is a loss or this is something to let us know about it. And then as a commission, we can respond to it. When it gets to you, somebody can come to the Planning and Zoning Commission and say, hey, this is our concern. That kind of insulates you a little bit from being the, the thorn all the time. <laughs> I used to be the thorn. <laughs> uh, so so uh, you're a key. If you weren't interested in open space, you're not a key. <laughs> but because you are. Thank you. I to talk with you sure, about it. I'd love, I'd love to talk about it. All right, um, so move up to potential future agenda items. The next meeting is January 23rd, 2022, uh, 4 to 6 p.m. 2023. 2023, you're right. Type on my part, sorry. Stand to the right. Um, and the one item that's on there right now is the Open Spaces Commission Chair and Vice Chair appointments. So we uh, get a chance to think about that and, and bring that item forward in January. All right, and this is the time. Uh, time for adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we're adjourned. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to, thanks to everyone. Thank you. Have a nice Christmas. See you next year. Very, very good day. <laughs> thanks. A lot of, a lot of good information.